In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe After Effects to track your footage and add a holographic display into your video. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe After Effects and we've got this footage of this keyboard. And this is the footage that I'm going to track. So in order to track the footage, first of all, we just want to go into the 3D camera tracker up in effects and presets and we just drag that onto the footage. And this is just going to take a moment just to analyze the footage and figure out where the digital camera is supposed to be within the frame. So depending on the performance of your computer, this could take 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, an hour. It completely varies. But there you go. Once that's finished the process, you'll get this solving camera banner appear and then you'll see all of these different tracking points. So if we just hover over one of these points, you'll see you get this target appear. So once you've selected your target, you can just right click and select create null and camera. And essentially now anything we add into the scene, if we convert it into a 3D shape, it will track to the footage perfectly. So we'll go layer new solid, press OK, we'll scale this down and then we'll just convert this into a 3D object by selecting this option and that will stick into the scene perfectly. So just make sure that this object is sticking. If you have to pull the quality down to half, third or a quarter, then that's fine. But just make sure that footage sticks, make sure that object sticks to your footage. And once you're happy with that, we can now move on to the holographic part of this tutorial. So we're just going to go ahead and make a new composition. So in order to do that, I just selected command and N, or you could go composition, a new composition. And we'll just make this 10 seconds. And we'll just call this hologram. There we go. And then in here, we can just go ahead and create a sequence of animations. So let's go layer new solid. And we'll just go time code. We'll drop a time code animation in. Just going to increase the size of this. And as you can see, that's just going to do this. We'll get rid of that box. Then we'll go into the rectangle tool. We'll get rid of the fill. We'll add a stroke. So add fill stroke. We'll make this a white. Then I'm just going to draw a rectangle around here. And I'll go into rectangle one. I'll select add. We'll go trim paths. And then end, I'm going to pull to zero, create a brand new keyframe on end, go to one second, pull that up to 100. Then I go to a half second and I'll create a brand new keyframe on start at zero. Then I go one second over and pull that up to 100%. So as you can see, it's just going to do this animation. Then I'm just going to loop this over and over. So I'm just going to copy the keyframes on end and I'm just going to move over a second every time. And I'm just going to paste these in like this. And then I'll do the same on the start. Just paste those in. So, cop so to copy and paste, it's Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V. And there you go. We're getting this weird animating effect now happening. But I think that looks really cool for what we're going for. I'm actually going to copy that. And I'm going to add another one of those in. And I'm just going to move that down here. I'm going to change the shape and the size of this. And I'm going to change the color of this to a blue. There we go. And we'll make that one thicker. So we'll increase the stroke width. Now we'll just go into the rectangle tool and pull down to ellipse tool. Then we'll just draw a circle. We'll go into add, select trim paths again. We'll go to the very beginning and we'll just pull the end down to zero. New keyframe on end, we'll go to two seconds and pull that up to 100. Four seconds, zero. Six seconds, 100. And just keep looping this process. Then we'll go into stroke and I'm just going to change the color of this to a nice yellow. And I'll go into stroke width and make this really wide. And then I'm just going to add some dashes in there by selecting this dash option. Then I'm just going to add less dashes onto this. So we create this icon. There we go. 
And I'm just going to drop that underneath all of this action. Then I'm going to copy and paste that a few times. So three, I'm going to change to a nice pink and I'm going to remove those dashes. So remove the dashes. And I'm going to copy that layer again and we'll move that over to the right. This time though, I'm going to change the stroke width down and I'll change the color to an orange. There we go. But on this one, I'm going to add some rotation. So I'll press R on the keyboard to load rotation, scroll through to the end, and I'm just going to rotate this around a few times. You can see the anchor point is all the way over here though. So I'm just going to press A to load the anchor point and move that over. And you want to make sure that's in the center. And then when you play this back, you'll notice it's going to have this really cool animation. And then of course you can add some words onto this. So let's go for a re rewind maybe. Then we can add the testing. We can add all sorts of words and terminology in here. We can drop them around all over the place. But once you feel like you've got something that looks like it could be some sort of infographic, holographic sort of display, you can go back into your composition, go into the project tab, and you can drop that hologram pre-comp into your composition. Then we can just convert this into a 3D object so it's now tracked into the scene. Then you just go into transform and we'll pull the scale down. And then we just want to get rid of this background. So if we go to toggle switches slash modes, we can change the mode from normal to screen and that's going to get rid of that background. But as you can see, it's kind of still there. So we'll try lighten instead. And you can see that's kind of got rid of the background, but because the background's not a complete black, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to go to layer, new, solid, and I'm going to make sure that I create a black solid, press OK and add that to the bottom. And then on dark gray solid seven, we can just, we'll just copy the time code from that layer, paste that onto the black solid and then get rid of the gray solid. So you can see it's now on a black background. Now, when we go back, you'll notice that has disappeared. And you can see we've got our hologram now tracked into the scene. So feel free to move this around wherever you want this to go. And if you wanted, you could add some rotation onto this. So you can go into X rotation and rotate it this way. You can go into Y and rotate it around here. You can also add some Z rotation. Before we carry on with this video, I first just want to take a very quick break to talk about the Brooker Films Skillshare courses. Now over on Skillshare, I have a variety of courses, including an introduction to Adobe After Effects. I also have an in-camera video transitions course, a stop motion course, green screen course, and so much more. So if you're interested in learning more about the world of filmmaking, then click one of the links in the description below. Now back to the video. So that's starting to look really awesome, but the problem is this isn't really interacting with the space that much. If there were actual lights in the scene, that they'd be interacting with the scene itself. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to drag that layer underneath. Then I'm just going to go into position scale and rotation, and I'm just going to rotate this down so that it lies flat on the table. There you go. So I just adjust the rotation. So you want to try and get this onto the table as much as possible. There you go. That looks about right. And we'll just increase the scale. And then of course that would be reflected. So we'll just pull this rotation back around like this. And there you go. That feels like it's now part of the scene a bit more. So now you can just go ahead and add your blur onto this layer if you wanted to. You could just blur that out a little bit. So you can see we're getting this cool reflection. Alternatively though, you could actually add this up here. You could increase the scale and this makes it feel like you're getting this reflection type effect. And that looks quite cool to be fair. Also, if you feel like you're losing data, then you can always add in a black solid, track that to the scene. So convert that to a 3D shape. And then you can just go ahead and adjust the scale the position and the rotation if you wanted to, or you could just expand it, draw a mask around your hologram animation. And then inside the masks, you can just increase the mask feather all the way up to a high number somewhere around here and just pull the opacity down a touch. 
and that just helps to bring that to life a bit. Although it's important that that's on the bottom underneath those hologram layers. Now, if you wanted to take this a step further, you could add in a Venetian blinds effect onto this. So if we go into effects and presets and search for blinds, if you drop transition Venetian blinds onto the top hologram layer, if we zoom in on this layer and we increase the transition completion, you can see we're getting this line effect on our animation. Now you can pull this all the way up and make this really intense, or you can have it quite small, but generally I just like having that because it just adds a little bit more texture. Of course, if you wanted to change the direction, then that's completely up to you. And you can also change the width to make this a really fine pattern somewhere around here. And I think that looks about right. So to sum up what we've done so far, we've tracked the footage. We've created a hologram infographic inside its own separate pre-composition. Then we've added that into the sequence. We've copied a version up in the foreground to create depth. And then we've added the Venetian blinds effect just to add that texture to the hologram infographic. But when you render this out and you play this back, you'll notice it's perfectly tracked into the scene and it looks really awesome. Of course, you can do whatever you want inside this hologram pre-composition and it will instantly change back into this composition. So if I just put C really large on the right of this pre-comp, because it's done in its own composition, if I go into comp five, then once this renders, there you go, that now adds in. So if you wanted to, you could just get this tracked into the scene, see how it looks. And then once you're happy with it, you go into this and make your adjustments and make that look factually accurate. But there you go. That is how I would create this holographic infographic effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So it's tracked into the scene. It's got a really nice glow and it looks great. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.